Welcome, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Board of Commissioners for Monday, January 4th, 2021, to order. And the first order of business is the invocation and pledge of allegiance. And I'd like to ask Commissioner Beaumont if he would lead us. Heavenly Father, as we gather for this first meeting of the Board of Commissioners, for I pray that you would give uh, each and every member of this board wisdom. Father, that as we discuss the issues that are before our board, Father, that the transparency and the honesty that we use in deliberating with it, it would be evident to all. Father, I cry out to you for the same transparency in the discussions and the debates that are going on over our presidential elections. Father, I pray that you would open the doors, that we would clearly see the results of that election, Father, because the way it's being done right now, whether good, bad, or different, Father, it does not instill confidence in we the people. Father, I ask your blessing upon this war. I ask your blessing upon this country. I ask your blessing from the great state of North Carolina. In Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Beaumont. The next item is the approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda this evening? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, add a couple changes to the agenda. Uh, first item will be under board appointments, add commissioner appointment uh, to the alternate RPO um, for Commissioner Jarvis will be coming off and that would be uh, as item two under uh, board appointments. And under consent agenda, add a surplus resolution for emergency management equipment and set that as item six. Okay. Um, any other amendments? If not, I'll ask for a motion for approval. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. The next item is public comment. We do not have anyone signed up for public comment this evening. Is there anyone in the audience would love to come up and speak to the commissioners tonight? And for anybody out there um, watching, this is a time that the board um, would love to have any input from our citizens. You know, we, we, we take the time, we listen, take notes. Um, we appreciate the input from our citizens out there, good, bad, indifference, anything you see with the county. It's your time to come before this board and just speak your mind. And, and, and please don't be intimidated because we... And we work for you out there, the citizens, and we would love you to come up and talk to us anytime you can get a chance to. So um, I have no one. So hearing no one, I'm going to close public comment. And I am going to go into the commissioner's report. And I am going to go ahead and start off really quick with the commissioner's report. And just want to say um, Happy New Year to everyone out there. Look forward to working with this board this year. We have a lot to do. Um, this is a great board. We're going to get a lot of good things done this year. Um, and a little update on the COVID. Um, I know a lot of commissioners and the county has been feel, fielding some questions about the vaccine. Um, starting this week, um, the 75 and year, years and older can start contacting the health department to get in a list to get the, get the shot, the vaccine. Um, right now, if he, somebody doesn't pick up the phone, please leave, just leave a message, leave your name and number, you will be called back and they're gonna get you on the list and they're gonna start scheduling as quickly and get you in as quickly as they can, as long as the vaccine is available. Um, there's a limited supply, they're gonna keep going until they run out and start up again as soon as we get the vaccine um, reissued to our area. And also keep in mind that the health department is following the state guidelines um, that was put out there in regards to the tiers and who gets them first and the next steps. And they're regular by the state health department. The county has no control over um, how, the, how the health department um, gets those vaccines out. The county, Currituck County, um, uh, is, is going to help any way we can with, 
with personnel or answering phones, any way we can to help with the health department to, uh, to make sure everyone's taken care of in a timely manner. But please call, leave a message. They will call you back and they will get you um, scheduled in just as quickly as possible. Um, the second item I just wanted to reiterate to everyone, remember that January 1, the convenience site decals came into play. And the county did that to help the taxpayers so we didn't have to increase tax fees. Um, there's no cost for it. You just need to, to have it on your vehicle. And if you don't and they ask you for it, show them some, some identification that you're a resident of Currituck County. Um, and um, they'll let you, you know, dump, your, dump your trash as needed be. It's, it's to stop the, um, the usage from outside of our area that's increasing the, uh, the trash um, pickup and, and so we don't have to increase that. So um, again, that's all I had for the night. And with that, I'm going to start over to my right with uh, Commissioner uh, Owen Etheridge. I have nothing tonight. Thank you, Mr. Etheridge. Okay, Commissioner McCord. I just got a couple things I'd like to say. Um, 2020 is in the books. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are glad 2020 is in the books. Um, 2021 is here, and hopefully it's a, a better year. I know Curry Tech County, we had a, a great year at the beach and all kinds of stuff with the COVID stuff that um, Commissioner Payments um, discussed. Um, I do want to touch on a program, and we thought it was really going to be tough this year, and it really wasn't. The Operation Santa with uh, DSS and the uh, Curry Tuck FOP, we, um, and we added kids like literally like 48 hours. People went shopping for kids a couple days before Christmas because we had added more kids. There's a lot of children in this county that aren't as fortunate. Moms and dads might have had some struggles financially, but we were just under 100 kids. I know it was more than 75, but I didn't want to say because we added a couple extras at the end that we shop for. Um, kind of these programs were combined. In the past, we'd always done like shop, shop with a cop where the deputies participate on their own time. The kids would get to ride in a cop car to Walmart. It was great, great for the kids. They loved it. But because of COVID, with this year we were shot for a kid. So, uh, you know, we have a, a ton of deputies as well as other family members. Some commissioners even not only donated money but went and shot for kids as well. Um, huge success every year. Like you worry you're not going to have enough funds. to. You don't want a kid to be left out. I mean, we literally, like I said, two days before there was um, – we have five kids, I want to say, on the 23rd that came into play that we got them. You know, each kid, was they spent 250 to $300 on each kid, which, you know, went a long ways. Um, the uh, I want to thank the businesses. There's a ton of them. I'm not going to name everybody because I could name for a long time, as well as I know a bunch of the commissioners donated money and other businesses um, throughout the community. Huge event. Um, the, this year we had, and I do, I'm going to name one business because it was the largest uh, donation that we've ever gotten in the history of, of, of the program with us. The FOP was uh, Quality Homes at Curry Tuck. Gave us the biggest check ever to the FOP Lodge, um, which, I mean, he took care of almost 20 kids. So, I mean, that was huge. Um, but, um, like I said, that was a success. Thank the citizens. Um, for that because like you said it was 2020 was a tough year and there was kids that didn't get stuff and not only did they get that but our food lines donated food and stuff for their families which was even better because you know like you said it's a it was a tough year so that's all I have to mention I know there's something else that I probably forgot but I just want to that was a positive note to end 2020 thank you Commissioner McCord uh, Commissioner Vice Chair Beaumont nothing this evening Mr. Chairman thank you sir uh, Commissioner White. Thank you. Um, I don't have much. Uh, I've been harping on uh, being open um, for my four-year tenure here as a commissioner, and um, that's the same tonight. Um, our retreat will happen probably in this room, um, and that starts February 4th to February 6th. Um, for those of you that um, are available to come in, you're welcome. It's open to the public. You can see what we do, um, how we come up with the decisions that we make, and um, it guides us for the next year uh, from budget to everything going on in the county, various projects and things that um, the board would like to see happen within this county. So um, please, uh, if you're available to, to come in for even a couple hours um, and just see what goes on, you can talk to commissioners after when we take breaks and maybe find out a little bit more about why we made a decision we made or, or how we got to a decision we made. So um, 
We'd love to see you come out and be a participant in that. Other than that, I just hope 21 is better than 20. Like you said, it was it was, it was pretty bad, and I'm um, looking forward to putting that one behind me as well. So that's Thank it. Thank you, Commissioner Moy. Uh, Commissioner Etheridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I want to piggyback off what Commissioner McCord said. And <clears throat> excuse me. I'd like to report that 253 children were served through Operation Santa in 2020. The program received an outpour in support from the community through sponsorships, donation of goods, and monetary donations. Many organizations were unable to hold their traditional fundraisers for Operation Santa due to the COVID. However, they were very creative in ways to raise money for the calls. Social Service reopened their application period twice due to the abundance of resources available. The Department of Social Service and I would like to thank our community partners for their generous support, which provided a wonderful Christmas to these 253 children. And the program only exists through the wonderful citizens of Currituck County. Second, with the new year starting, I would like to ask individuals in our county to become more involved in your government. Make sure you hold <coughs> me and all of us other officials accountable. We were elected to serve you, the people, not our own objectives. Also, know what's going on at the state level and also the federal level. Make your voices heard. Don't just sit back and think that you can't make a difference. Don't sit back until it's too late. When we have a representative from Missouri open the 117th Congress with a prayer and then end it with amen and a women, we have a problem, people. When the Speaker of the House el uh, eliminates specific terms as mother, father, son, daughter, aunt, and uncle, folks, we have a real problem. As a mother, a daughter, an aunt, and a woman, make 2021 the year of service for all people in our great county, state, and country. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Etheridge. Commissioner Jarvis. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go with what some of the other ones said. Um, we're all thankful that 21, 2021 is here. Uh, one of my friends... Uh, put on Facebook that she wasn't staying up to ring in 2021. She was making sure 2020 left. <laughs> and I think we all feel that way, uh, that it's over. Um, last year did change the way we do business. It changed the way that we get together, our social fabric, our institutions like our schools, our vocabulary certainly, um, the way we shop, our celebrations, and our grievings. And to say that we want to go back to the normalcy of 2019, I think, is what many people feel. But let's keep some of the things that were positive about 2020. Our family time. Uh, good hygiene is another thing that I think 2020 taught us. And many people discover just how wonderful Currituck County is. And this county, uh, with a uh, close-knit community, is very enticing to people in trying times like this pandemic. So let's move on to a brighter 2021 and go with the positives that last year brought us. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jarvis. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but our county manager is not going to be here tonight with us. So our county attorney, uh, Ike McCree, is going to be wearing dual hats. And with that being said, the county manager's report is next. And I'm not sure if you had any updates for us. Uh, I did not receive any updates from the county manager for this evening. Okay, thank you. All right, the next uh, item in the agenda is administrative reports. And the first thing that uh, this board would like to do under administration reports is recognize our previous um, board chairman, Bob White. So I'm going to ask Commissioner White if he would step out front here with us for him. We got this on for him. And the other commissioners want to come up here too with them. I was going to let you go first. Uh oh, we're not going to get this. Okay. Oh, we can have a. I don't want to. We'll practice as soon as somebody else has it. Okay. Yeah, we will. Well, 
As everyone knows, um, Commissioner White served as our past two years chairman, and we'd like to recognize him tonight for, tonight for a job well done. Um, he did a great job for this board in uh, keeping us on track and getting things done. And with that, we got a little plaque here that says, presented to Bob White in recognition of your dedication and service to the citizens of Curitiba County as chairman of the Curitiba County Board of Commissioners, December 20th to December 2020. Again, I want to say thank you and thank you very much. Job for us. Thank you. Uh, if, if our county attorney wanted to address that then really quick for the public. Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of information. My understanding is that maybe perhaps there had been some COVID issues yeah, it says in, it on the in that so department, but that uh, people are going to be able to pay their taxes and certainly ought to. And I think the finance office staff, as I understand it, will be assisting with receipt of those payments. <clears throat> yeah, there's some education. So okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, yeah, just please note of that, that you can still uh, make your payments as needed to just um, have an alternate. Um, next order of business is a resolution honoring Senator Mark Bass Knight. And I would like to ask if Commissioner um, Owen Etheridge could give a little background, since I know he was a, um, on the board and a chairman back in the day with Mr. Bass Knight. Um, and... Um, and uh, we have a resolution. I'd ask him to go ahead and read it then as well, uh, just to give this county a little background of what he's done for us. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner uh, Etheridge if I could. Chairman, uh, appreciate that. Um, Senator Bass Knight did a lot for Curry Tuck County over his tenure. I had the uh, good fortune of serving 16 years as a county commissioner when he was president pro tem of the Senate. So I knew firsthand a lot of the things that he was doing. And I picked out four things that I know he did to help us. And I'd just like to share those with you. Uh, one of the first things he did was he arranged for Curry Tuck County to have the prison camp at Maple transferred from the state to the county of Curry Tuck. And we went in and uh, rehabbed it and made it our county jail. We were under a lot of pressure at that time to get a new jail facility. And we had looked at comparable counties across the state and what they had done in jail construction. And they were talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to $18 million. And Senator Bass Knight had the camp, prison camp uh, transferred to us and we spent about four to five million dollars in refurbishing it and getting it up to speed to meet the standards. So that was a ten million dollar savings plus for Curry Tuck County. <clears throat> he kept Curry Tuck County in the small school funding for a long time after we were supposedly expired out because of the increase in our average daily membership was above the level. And I think that ran for about five or six years that where we picked up a little over a million dollars per year from the school, small school funding. And that was very important to the county. Along with um, <clears throat> Representative Bill Owens, they had the airport property transferred to the county of Curry Top. Out there now we have an industrial park. We've built a public safety building on some of that uh, property, the COA Aviation Building, and that was a very important transfer of property to Curry Tuck County. Our industrial park out there now is starting to take off. We're seeing some economic development going on out there, and we will see even more so. And the fourth thing I'll point out is that he was responsible for the Wildlife Resources Center at the Whalehead Club being built and 
there was a move afoot that was originally scheduled to be built there, but there was a move afoot in the General Assembly to move it into the middle part of the state, toward the middle part. And Senator Bass Knight said, no, we need one on the coast, the northeast coast, and this is the perfect location. And he was responsible for the WRC Center being built there. So that's four things that I know he was very instrumental in doing for Curry Tuck County. And we all benefit from the contributions he made. So I will read the resolution. Or as Mark Bass Knight served as citizens of Curry Tuck County as the North Carolina State Senator from 1984 until 2011, and whereas Senator Bass Knight served as Senate Pro Tem from 1997 until 2010, and whereas during his time as Senator and Senator as Senate Pro Tem, Mark Bass Knight unified the power of the North Carolina General Assembly to move North Carolina forward in the areas of transportation, environmental protection, education, and whereas, Senator, whereas the programs and policies developed during Senator Bass Knight's time in office will continue to have positive effects across North Carolina, his impacts can best be seen in the district that elected him to office for 27 years, and whereas the improvements to roads, bridges, education, environmental protection, and tourism can be seen in his entire district, Curry Tuck County was the recipient of Cur uh, Senator Bass Knight's programs and policies directly in many instances, and whereas the direct benefit to Curry Tuck County can be seen in areas such as the widening of Highway 158, County ownership of the airport and prison facility, construction of the WRC Center at historic Corolla Park, natural coastlines and improved recognition and tourism for the Outer Banks, and whereas Senator Bass Knight's legacy will continue to reverberate throughout Curry Tuck County and be a benefit to the citizens here for decades to come. Whereas Senator Bass Knight passed away on December the 28th, 2020, now, therefore, be it resolved that, the Cur that Curry Tuck County would like to send its heartfelt thanks and condolences to the fa uh, family of Senator Mark Bass Knight in their time of grief. Mark Bass Knight was a champion for Curry Tuck County during his time in the General Assembly, and his contribution to our community and legacy will be remembered. Adopted the fourth day of January, 2021. Thank you, Commissioner Etheridge. Can, <clears throat> very well stated and, and very well deserved. Can I get a motion for approval of the resolution? So moved. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. The next item of business is public hearings. Uh, PB 2021. Nigel and Sarah Culpepper rezoning request to rezone 7.5 acres of property located at 6804 Caritoke Highway from light industrial to general business. The property tax or the property is tax map 108 parcel 52D Papa Branch Township. And with that, I'll turn it over. Oh, okay. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the applicants, Nigel and Sarah Culpepper, are requesting a conventional rezoning of this property located at 6804 Caritoke Highway in Granby from LI to GB, and this request is a downzoning. <clears throat> Here you can see the parcel outlined in blue to the bottom of the, the aerial photography. Uh, the parcel is seven and a half acres and is currently undeveloped. Um, to the north, you can see... Uh, uh, Uncle Graham Road here and Waterside Village just to kind of orient you to the property. And here's a view, here's the property again, top of the screen. You can see across the street is the convenience center and to the south, Garrington Road and then the Cotton Gen property down here. The parcel is currently zoned LI Light Industrial. Property to the north is zone general business and is currently vacant wooded area. 
uh, property to the south, directly to the south, is zoned LI. Um, that's the Weep and Radish Brewery and Butchery and Restaurant. The property to the east uh, is general business and ag zoning. Uh, that's, again, where the convenience center is and farmland and, and wooded area across the highway. And then to the west, property zone LI, and it's vacant agricultural. Actually, at the, the back of this property, there is a wastewater spray field for the wheat and radish um, use right here on the parcel. So in 2000, the property was rezoned from general business to light manufacturing as part of a request that included 78.9 acres. Uh, the zoning was translated from light manufacturing to light industrial with the adoption of the UDO and the zoning map in 2013. <clears throat> the parcel is designated as full service within the Grandy sub area. The applicant did hold a community meeting on October 20th of last year. Only the applicants and their family and county staff were in attendance, but the applicants did provide correspondence from neighboring owners um, that can be found in your agenda packet starting on page 23. Uh, one correspondence from Uli uh, Benowitz, I believe is how you pronounce his name, of Leaf and Radish. And he wanted to just make sure um, that the owners knew that he, of the existing and future impacts that might be felt um, from his use of property there, the restaurant, kitchen, um, odor, forklift operation, the wastewater spray field, and um, stating that he has plans for future development on the property that may also have impacts. And William Bradley, the owner of the farm across the highway, uh, sent in a letter stating no objection. The property has existing hedgerows along the north and south uh, property lines. Uh, this will help to buffer uh, the property from the existing LI and the brewery restaurant use on, on the property here. So you can see here that most of this property that's zoned LI is accessed by Grange Drive. Um, the subject property does not have access onto Grange Drive. So the, the down zoning of this property to GB uh, will consolidate the accesses for, to LI properties to Grange Drive. This, con this zoning request is consistent with the 06 land use plan um, because it's consistent with some of the policies of the plan, including commercial development policy four regarding highway oriented commercial uses, um, mainland policy four that the county recognizes the appearance and traffic moving function of the 168 158 corridor is of exceptional importance to quality of life and long term economic prospects, and uh, transportation policy six that highway 158 168 shall receive special attention concerning the proper development of land and properties adjoining and are accessing this arterial. So on its face, the request appears to be consistent with the land use plan and the ordinance. Uh, these policies of the plan speak to protecting the appearance of the 168-158 corridor and highway oriented industrial uses are not preferred. Uh, this rezoning will require future commercial projects to comply with the non-residential design standards of the ordinance to establish higher quality development and and uh, enhance the appearance of development along 158. Uh, properties that are zoned LI are not required to meet those non-residential design standards. Those properties are required on um, uh, metal facades are per per uh, prohibited on the facade facing the street in LI, but there are no design standards for any other sides of the building. Just the prohibition on metal. So the, the applicants have indicated that they plan to build a single family dwelling on the property to the rear of this stand of trees in the middle here. Um, staff does have concerns with compatibility of a residential dwelling adjacent to LI zone property and existing LI uses. However, general business zoning is more compatible to the LI than residential zoning. And in this case, a res residential zoning um, is not a good option because the property does not border any residentially zoned property. The UDO allows residential uses and general business zoning, which is a major difference between 
general business and light industrial zoning. But although residential uses are permitted in general business, it is not a residential district, and dwellings located in the GB district do not get the same protections from potentially incompatible uses as a dwelling in a residential zoning district. For example, community compatibility standards, uh, which are intended to ensure compatibility between single family dwellings and more intense development, do not apply to non-residential uses adjacent to a dwelling that's located in GB zoning. On page uh, 13 of your agenda packet, there's a use comparison by zoning district. And you can see that many commercial uses are permitted in both general business and light industrial. And certain uses are permitted in GB and not LI and vice versa. Uh, uses that are permitted in LI but not GB um, tend to have more compatibility issues and other on and off site impacts. So staff does have concerns about construction of a residence and property zone general business adjacent to LI. But uh, for this particular request, considering that it is a down zoning of property, uh, staff does recommend approval of the rezoning request and the planning board also recommends approval. I previously reviewed the land use plan policies that are consistent with the request. Um, staff suggests that the rezoning request is consistent with policies, uh, commercial development policy four, mainland policy four, and transportation policy six, and that it's reasonable and in the public interest because it may result in future non-residential uses that meet higher quality design standards along Caretoke Highway, the county's most important major arterial street, and the request will reduce the potential for incompatible highway-oriented industrial uses. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Does the board got any questions? No, it's, uh, it, might. it's it is paved. Yeah, it is paved. Yeah. yeah, not all the way back though, right? No, I, no. No, it's just, I think it's just where we come into a the, little, no. yeah, a little piece in the front, and then it goes back to gravel. I think. Like right here, I believe. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Ms. Turner? If not, I'll invite the uh, thank you, Ms. Turner. I'll invite the applicant to come up if they'd like to um, provide some information or comments. And if you could just please state your name and address, please, for uh, the record. My name is Sarah Culpepper, and at the moment we live at 510 West First Street in Kill Double Hills, uh, North Carolina, 2948. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so. Okay. Oh, I'm Nadja Culpepper, currently 510 First Street, Kill Double Hills, North Carolina. Thank you. Um, any other information you'd like to provide or anything regarding this? And um, this is not just like this, we got married on this property. And so it has sentimental value to us as well. Yeah. I've so. taken care of the property for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Love to build a house there. Okay. Yeah. And you guys are aware that um, of the, the potential for something to land behind you, you could have. It's yeah, we've seen the lady ask what's you, problem, okay. what they can do there. We're all cool with them. And you've had conversations with Mr. Benowitz and understand the impact of his business. Yeah, I talked to him on the telephone one day and email correspondence. But we're all I'm cool with it. We've we've been out there many times and never had heard smells or smells anything. or anything like that. And I know that he has to come forth with those issues too. But there's it's a lot of wooding between our property. But, but keep in mind, much. something could always could change there. When exactly. Yeah, I understand. Exactly. I understand. <clears throat> but born and raised on the Outer Banks, okay. used to noise. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicant? If not, then we thank you for coming out tonight. And now, under the public hearing, um, which is next, I had your names listed there. Was this? This was kind of what we thought we okay, were talking well, about. Okay, well, I'll scratch it off as we go there. So, All right, thank you. Then I'm going to open up next. I'm going to open up the public hearing. Um, I had Nigel Culpepper, which... I guess you've only spoken to that. Um, next, I had Sarah Culpepper, which you've only spoken. And then uh, the last one I had on was a Blake Culpepper. That's my father. Okay, is he going to come up and speak? 
<laughs> okay. It's up to you. Okay, you're good. Okay, thank you. All right, that's all I had. Is anybody else that uh, didn't sign up that got maybe got her late would like to speak on the hearing? If not, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any further questions from the board, staff, or anything? Or if not, then I'll um, open the floor for a motion. Uh, I move to approve PB 2021 because the rest the request is consistent with the land use policies, including policy CD4, policy ML4, policy TR6, and the request is reasonable and in the public interest because the request will result in future non-residential uses that meet higher quality design standards along Caratoke Highway, the county's most important major arterial street. The request will reduce the potential for non-compatibility highway-oriented industrial uses. Thank you, Ms. Jarvis. We have a motion. Um, I'll go ahead and second that. Do we have any further discussion from the board? If not, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. The next um, item under public hearing is PB 20-22, Pinnacle Storage, Conditional Rezoning, Robert High Development LLC is requesting conditional rezoning of a 10.48 acre parcel from conditional heavy industrial formally zoned for 84 lumber to conditional heavy industrial for self-service storage. The property is owned by Pierce Hardy LTD partnership and is located at 1462 Caratoke Highway, tax map 23, parcel 68J, Moyoc Township, and I believe the presenter is Jason Latrell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so the applicant, Robert High Development, is requesting a conditional rezoning of a 10 and a half acre parcel. Um, was according to the historical zoning maps, uh, has been zoned for industrial use since at least 1970. Most recently um, received in 2015 a conditional rezoning for uh, 84 lumber for a large lumber warehouse and retail use, which uh, unfortunately never came to be. Uh, you can see here the aerial photo, um, kind of a wide shot. There is some residential development here up the road. But immediately surrounding, you can see there are several industrial uses, including a concrete plant here and a precast concrete facility here, as well as a recycling center. So there are some surrounding compatible uses here in the area. So the request is to actually rezone for um, self-storage use, conditional rezoning for that. <clears throat> closer view of those um, surrounding uses. And here you can see the current zoning, and you'll notice that the adjacent properties have a portion of general business in the front near the highway, which was the case for this parcel until it was conditionally rezoned for 84 lumber in the past. Um, and so that would have pushed these industrial uses back off the highway a little further had that remained. The applicant is proposing um, condition to, well, first of all, they've placed the, um, you can see that uh, here, I'll skip to the site plan, they've placed the stormwater pond area here in the front to kind of push the use back off the highway some, and also one of the conditions that they're proposing is to uh, increase the required landscaping out here to 140% of what's required by the ordinance. What was the uh, landscaping for that? It's it's lower stuff, right? It's not. It's, it's um, designed for to aesthetics rather than screening, right? There are some trees, right. and shrubs, and then ground cover. Yeah, so there's a mix of all three. Okay. Um, those large circles you can see here are trees, um, and then the shrubs are obviously the the smaller portions in between. Uh, the land use plan has this site currently uh, designated as rural, but the um, Moyoc Small Area Plan does show it as limited service. Uh, here's a look at the site plan. 
like I said before, the stormwater ponds are out here in the front, which pushes this back uh, closer to where the general business line was before. Uh, there's a phasing plan where the first three buildings will be constructed first, and then the back three will be built as market demand increases. Jason, where's the access? The centered in the middle? Yeah, right in the middle. Yep, here. So the ponds are going to be left and right? That's correct. Is that the only access, or is there access from? Yeah. I believe that's the only one. Over to the river. It's yeah. blocked otherwise, yeah. Again, here's the landscaping plan. Uh, they submitted some building elevations so you can kind of get an idea of what it may look like. Uh, they've done some work on the front facade uh, to meet the ordinance requirements and to dress up the way the building looks. It'll be something similar, you can tell from these pictures, something similar to the ample storage down the road. Um, one other thing they've done with the design, if I can go back to the site plan, is that um, all the access doors to the units will be internal, so you won't see any of those on the outsides of the building as you're driving up and down the road. Jason, how, how tall are those buildings again? Were they going to be the structures? Let me see if I can see that from the elevations. I don't know if I can read that or not. Up this tall. Yeah, about, that, about that tall? Okay. Is this Lego tall? Okay. Yeah. Put bigger than a matchbox car. Well, they, they do meet the, uh, obviously, they meet the height requirements of the ordinance. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, looks like uh, about 16.8. Can you see it? 18.8. Yeah, as okay. the and then you got the parapets that come up okay. to 20. Right, they're taller. Yeah. The, gen the general height looks about 16, 17 foot. And then the shrubbery, we're just going to keep, it's going to be shrubs and just a few trees up front, you said? There's, yeah, I can go back to that so you can kind of get an idea of the amount of trees. There's okay. 20 canopy trees, 10 per yep. 100 linear foot, yep. um, and 12 understory trees proposed in, in yeah. this. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. How big are the retention ponds up front? Not very. Mm -mm. So if that um, if that was reestablished back to the original GB zoning, they'd have more room for larger retention ponds then to put there. Well, they'd have. They have to move back to the front. They have to move back or, re or redesign line. the, yeah, yeah. yeah with, with, uh, originally that was GB. You said before we rezoned it for That's the correct. 84 lumber, and then now they, they're not coming. So, so, how far back is that line? The GB line, 500 feet. I believe it's 500 feet. Okay, so if you moved it back to first building would be 500 feet off the road. True. Okay. This request is consistent with several policies of the land use plan, including three industrial development policies, number one, two, and five. Um, as well as community appearance policy number three, which speaks to the landscaping improvements and economic development policy number one for new and expanding industries and businesses. Moyock Small Area Plan Policy B13, to, which speaks about actively marketing Moyock as an emerging, emerging growth area to encourage targeted retail and service development. Conditional zoning request is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the land use plan, other applicable county adopted plans, and the purposes of this ordinance. It is compatible with existing and proposed uses surrounding the land subject to the application, and is the appropriate zoning district and uses for the land and addresses a demonstrated community need. And it is reasonable and in the public interest because it provides a needed service for the growing industry, uh, growing residential development in Moyoc. The uh, Here you can see the 
proposed and agreed upon conditions. Number one, 20% uh, windows on the highway frontage side of the buildings, which is actually consistent with what, with what the ordinance requires. Just kind of restating that. Um, there will be a finished front facade of either brick stucco or a similar finish, so no metal siding on the highway. And also, uh, as we discussed earlier, the 140% of required streetscaping, which will be allowed to be clustered to provide some visibility from 168. And of course, a major site plan application shall be submitted to ensure full compliance with the ordinance. So staff and uh, the planning board both recommend approval of this request, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, one thing I didn't see, was, did they have a um, diesel lane? Was there one required by DOT? I was looking through it, I didn't see that, but for us, it seems like a lot of other things. We, we started adding diesel lanes coming off the highway, and that was not part of this project, is it? No. it? It wasn't a comment that I'm aware of. Uh -uh. What about the uh, condition from NCDOT about um, if it's gated and has to have an access, have they? Um, about the stacking of vehicles. Right, has that, I mean, I don't see it in your conditions, but is that something that they're willing um, to comply to? I think that the uh, engineer for the project has been working with DOT on that, and I can let him answer that. Okay. Because they've got a, right now it looks like about 150 feet from the road mm. back to the first building under, under this plan. Right. And okay. that could be a comment that gets addressed um, during the major site plan process mm -hmm. if it's not already resolved. Just is, there, is there any other um, projected businesses currently looking at the adjacent properties on the north and south side? As far as I know, yeah, the one to the north is is being proposed to do very similar use, self-storage. And and um, I did hear something, although I'm not positive, about the one to the south as well. So, the, so we the could line potentially self-storage is right there. Could be a cluster, yes. <coughs> storage land. Self-storage. <laughs> but you'll have one that's the one piece of property that's goes all to the road, and the other two have to come back to the general business. That's true. And the general business uh, zone does extend 250 feet back, 250 and not, and not 500. Okay. Yeah, just to clarify. I thought it seemed a little too short to be 500. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so this one, this one's 154 foot or better from the right of way, um, I guess for expansion of the highway. The, some of the existing ditch is well more than that. So, yeah, from the right of way is 154 is what they're proposing, the front end of the building right now. So about 100 feet closer? Uh, yes. Yep. Looks, looks at it. Yep. And if we, and again, just assumptions here, if the other proposed projects their entrance would have to be the same way up the main highway, but they'd have a longer entrance currently. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions for? Jason, if not, I'm going to go ahead and ask the applicant to come up, please. If you could just please state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. My name is Dave Clevitz, um, engineer with the Civil Professional Group out of Kitty Hawk. Uh, my personal address is 3831 Keepers Way in Kitty Hawk. Um, I'm here tonight with the applicant, uh, Robert High, with uh, uh, Robert High Development, LLC. Um, Jason touched on a lot of the points that I had already uh, listed here to go over, but I uh, was going to answer a couple additional questions that came up. So the uh, building facade on the front will range between about 16 to 20 feet. So that's well within the height limitation allowed by the UDO. Um, one thing that I just want to make sure that we all understand is, you know, this is just a conceptual development plan for the conditional rezoning that's been, that's being requested. Um, once this is approved, if it's approved, then we'll have to go through and do the full blown final design and get permits from NCDOT, the state of North Carolina for stormwater, for ENS, uh, ARHS for the septic system. So all of that design is to come. 
and included in that design will be the stormwater management system to meet both the state's requirements and the county's requirements. So yes, this, this plan does have two ponds up front to help um, manage the stormwater coming off the front, but uh, in the very back, uh, there's a very large stormwater pond also shown in the back back there. So there's a significant amount of area that's been set aside for the provision of stormwater on this site. As Lori mentioned, the uh, setback of the GB is actually 250. Um, you know, we are proposing that the buildings would be set back 150 feet from the right of way. Um, Mr. Literal uh, already mentioned that all the access doors will be facing inward, so you won't see those from the highway. Um, the landscaping plan, again, that will be uh, there was a landscaping plan provided with the application, but uh, there'll be a more detailed complex plan presented with the final site plan that will meet all the conditions which the uh, applicant is willing to accept that 140% of the uh, UDO requirement, which it's my understanding that was a condition of the 84 lumber approval uh, that came prior to this. So. Um, Beyond that, you know, I don't really think that there's anything else to add. This is just a straight kind of rezoning from one conditional high heavy industrial to another um, since 84 Lumber decided to not to move forward. Um, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you guys might have, though. Um, so uh, I think one of the questions before the board really is, um, do we want to see this stay as it was with the, um, the GB setbacks on either side of it, shouldering it? Um, and would it, be, uh, would it be doable to move this back to 250 feet? Um, it would obviously, from an engineering standpoint, you'd have to change how your ponds are sitting. Um, just, just shooting from the hip, is that something you think that you could pull off? to handle your stormwater there. <coughs> um. Um, it's possible. I, it's really hard for me to say because we haven't actually done a full-blown right. design. Right. Um, the only thing that I would say is that, you know, if we slide the development back, we're pinching off the corner of that back dedicated stormwater area, which will reduce that quite a bit. Uh, but we also would be gaining some up right. front. Right, yeah, you'd be right. gaining on the front, so you'd have to right. change how your, where your water goes, basically. Right. That was my one. Okay. My concern just looking at this is, I mean, we've had comments that we possibly could get some storage units on the north and south side. <clears throat> so you'll have storage, storage, you have a storage sticking out further to the road, and then Mr. Jarvis made a good point about if it's gated, um, shorter entrance route to that. Um, I, I, I think mean, I, a further setback would be ideal. I, I kind of did like what Commissioner White was saying. I mean, if that line was moved back to the original GB, keep that front GB and keep everything consistent. Um, that's why I think it, I was listening to to see if it was doable or not. So I'm trying to find the, so I can read it verbatim, the comment from DOT, the DRC comment. Yeah, there was a comment, a basic truck or a car. Right, which 100, 150 feet is, is more than sufficient for that, yeah. So there, there's not asked for a turn lane, um, and, you know, they did bring up the stacking, which certainly that's been addressed. <clears throat> Any other questions from this board to the applicant? So, um, you know, 
again, if, if stacking starts to become an issue, people have more than enough room to pull off into the parking area off to the side. Uh, they're not just limited to once they pull in, they can't go anywhere. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Hyde. I might be able to work with him and uh, answer a couple more of your questions. Uh, you asked about the desale lane. Um, a facility of this size typically has traffic of about 35 to 45 uh, trips a day in. Um, we are a full retail business. We're open uh, seven days a week, but there's really no traffic. Um, if you think about a customer, our customer, uh, they come to move in. They make several, probably several trips uh, on that day to get their stuff in storage. And then next, you know, they might stop and you know, periodically, but then they're whenever they move out. A uh, customer, our customers stay somewhere around a thousand days, so it's not a lot of turnover um, to to of, of the customers. Uh, yes, we do have the gate parallel uh, to the front building, but it is completely parallel, so it is all the way back. Um, we have not we build these throughout several states and I have not been asked to put a desale lane in in probably 15 years and I'm, I'm talking about whether I build them in Charlotte or any other city uh, whether rural or um, a high density city um, so uh, I think that would answer that question on your desale. So could this be done if I know there's some comments made about um, originally that was GB up front before it got rezoned for the 84 lumber. If it was still the if it was still the original zoning with the GB up front, could this still be um, built there? Well, you got a problem if you also look at uh, that picture you were just looking. Um, this is a septic field, so as you try to squeeze back. You're then squeezing that too, so I think the in general this uh, this civil design was taken from the footprint of the 84 lumber, where they had done all their calculations and understood their storm borders because that was really far along, um, and that would could create an issue with our septic. I don't I'm not an engineer, a, but if you're if you're if you're moving your water, so you make your rear pond smaller and your front ponds bigger. Um, I don't. How does that play into your septic field? I'm not getting that. When you you can move the water, but how does it? Can you move the septic up there also? That could be an issue. Right. Why would you? Not, I'm you know, like I said. I'm not an engineer, but the, why would you need to move the septic? You're just you're moving the footprint of the building back, and you're changing the footprint of your ponds. Well, also you got to make sure the water you can get the water in both directions because it's such a large tract. Right. And again, we we were just trying to use somewhat of the same civil design that they knew uh, had done calculations and we knew would be work knew would work for the eighty four lumber. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any you know, other comments, questions? Two hundred. Yeah. So it sounds like we want to look at trying to move it back for the, from the highway. It sounds like. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, drop it back to uh, two hundred feet. Mm -hmm. Fifty feet. Fifty feet. Two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? Um, I'm sure we might not work. Okay, um, I guess with planning, is that going to create any issues by? So just make sure that that is included in the motion, mm -hmm. that you change that. To to move in the back an additional 50, 50 feet. feet. Yes. Okay, is there any other um, questions, discussions for the applicant? If not, then thank you, sir. And I'm going to go ahead and open the Floor up to public hearing. I'll say my name was on that, and so unless you, I didn't know the formality, oh, okay. so you don't need my name. Um, well, as I go through it, if you be, if you, okay. if you've always, that's fine. 
I had Robert High. Um, that's okay, so check that off. And the next one I had David. Okay, that's you, David. Okay. And then last on here was Luke Gallup. Yes, sir, come on up. And if I could just get you to state your name and address, please, when you get up here. My name is Luke Gallup, address 1494 Curry Top Highway. And my understanding is that I'm be his neighbor to the adjacent property. <laughs> to the north? You know, oh, south, the south of it. Okay, then here. To the south. And, uh, My issue is, and always been, is the flooding. On my property, it floods with two or three inches of rain already. And I talked to several people in the soil department and other things, and a gentleman came out and said, well, I got them in the plans that change our degree of drainage from a 45 to a 90 or a 90 to a 45. But as I got in this meeting, before I was there when 84 tried to come in. And I mean, I welcome around me and stuff. And in front of me, they done lawn and everything. That issue, I don't know if they're gonna make it industrial or not against moving forward. It's just that financially, if they drain that thing with their sewer, and the ponds in front. The water going already to the front from the fields behind. And from that step, what do you call that? It's not the time. System. It's right? coming to the ditch. To the front. To, to the front of 168. And I, I just need some kind of if it, nothing I can do, I'm gonna be flooded out. And we just had the People I talk to, they say, well, that's highly unlikely or whatever. The other thing is if you reverse it, then I got the train track back there. So the train people, if you put that pond back there on them, I don't know what their issue going to be, but they got a switching station over there from right behind off, <clears throat> off breast to the right of my house. That's where they put the switching station for the train. I already had an issue with them from coming, using the lane, and, and, uh... Our biggest problem is flood. Our biggest problem is flood okay. and protect. And then where the water going? It's going to the front. And, and I think if this rezoning gets approved, then the next thing they're going to have to provide that comes before, it would be a um, storm water, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a storm water plan, and show exactly how they're going to capture the water that it doesn't affect your property, and, and, and it's got to be reviewed by the county staff before it gets approved. So they're going to have to have a detailed um, drawing and exactly explain how they're going to keep it on their property and not let it go to yours. Is that? I will greatly appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Yes, that yes you're correct. Um, and the next step would be the major, if this is approved, would be the major site plan. And part of that is, is the stormwater plan. Um, and this particular project would have to um, contain uh, the water from a, a five-year a five-year storm. You hear about the ten-year, the five, and the hundred years. So this would be the five-year storm. They would have to address, keep that amount of water on their property, or, or handle that amount of water uh, from the five-year storm. So um, that's that's the standard they would have to meet. I'm getting understanding. So, yeah, they would have to do modeling and, and contain that. Mr. Gallup, where does the water go under the highway to get to Rolling Creek, Guinea Mill? Rolling Creek. I mean Guinea Mill that Canal. North of me? Guinea Mill Canal, because it goes that direction. Do you know where the pipe is under the highway? That might be by Little Georgia. Yeah, by uh, her uncle, Little Georgia. Yeah, so it south. comes down the road and then goes under. Right, because when the water do come on my property, it drains quickly. Okay. 
Thank you. So it sounds like it, it'll be addressed prior to approval to make sure that that's not all affecting right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all I had um, on public hearing. Is there anyone else that came in late that may want to speak on this? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public hearing and ask the board if they have any other further questions or if the applicant would love to come back up again or if they're good. Okay, no other questions? Then I'll go ahead and ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move to approve PB 20-22 with agreed upon conditions because the request is consistent with the land use policies. Conditions I think we've talked about is 140% of the required streetscape uh, requirement. Move the building, the, uh, building back to 200 feet instead of the 150 feet as proposed. Is that the other altered conditions we had? 20% windows and a finished front facade. Okay, with the staff recommendations <laughs> as listed. Okay. Um, because they are consistent, consistent with the land use policies ID 1, ID 2, ID 5, CA 3, ED 1. And the request is reasonable and in the public interest because it provides a needed service for the growing residential development in Mayock. Okay, there's a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Okay, I have a second. Is there any further discussion from this board? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and ask this board for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I will say I can hardly see the screen because of the glare from that light. <laughs> okay. Because okay. when I look up, right there it is in my eyesight. That's why I didn't know it was up there. The next item under public hearings is PB 20-17, uh, request an amendment to the uh, Curta County, request an amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance Chapter 4, use standards to correct agriculture support and services, wind energy facility, large and outdoor tour operators, aviation in Table 4, Point one point one point B summary use tables for the planned development zoning districts as previously adopted by the Board of Commissioners. And I believe Ms. Volvo, you were presenting that. I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a housekeeping change to the ordinance that you have before you tonight. Uh, it was submitted by the county in an effort to correct an issue that we discovered after the adoption of uh, the Curry Tuck Station text amendment back in last year, 2020. Um, it involves three use types, the distribution hub for agricultural products, large wind energy facilities, and aviation outdoor tour operators. Specifically, those three requests, uh, which all happened to be in 2019, around about the time that um, Curry Tuck Station was being uh, considered, it was being drafted and considered, and then ultimately was adopted in 2020. Uh, this new table did not include these three items, and this was the Plan Development Zoning District table. If you recall, uh, we pulled out the the summary use table specifically for plan developments and put them separate. And in doing so, we left out these three. And these three uh, involve, like I said, three land uses. That was PB 1926, the Nutrien Ag Solutions that was adopted in, in December 2nd, 2019, that added agronomic uses to the distribution hub for agricultural products. Uh, PB 1714, it was a county text amendment that was adopted January 22nd, 2019, that removed all large wind energy facilities as a permitted use type. PB 1909, it was Bruce Weaver on behalf of Kitty Hawk Kites, that was adopted June 3rd, 2019. That amendment added the aviation outdoor tour operator as a permitted use type. 
sorry for the small text, but uh, th this is uh, the actual summary use table that identifies the changes. As I said, it adds in the agronomic products. It removes uh, large wind energy facilities from the PDM and PDO district. And it also adds in aviation outdoor tour operators as it was approved in 2019 and allowed in the PDM and PDO districts. So this text amendment is a legislative decision by the board and requires the adoption of a um, written statement of consistency and reasonableness. Each of those three text amendments that were adopted by the board in 2019 contained a written statement and we're including those in this request. Uh, policy ED1 is the new and expanded industries and businesses should be especially encouraged that diversify the local economy, train and utilize a more highly skilled labor force and are compatible with the environmental, environmental quality and natural amenity based economy of Curry Tuck County that was used with PB 1926 and PB 1909. Policy ED4, in addition to the recruitment and expansion of major new industry, the considerable value of small business startups expansion and spinoffs shall also be recognized. That was included in PB 1909. Uh, policy ID5, warehousing, storage, and distribution facilities shall have access to thoroughfares and adequate travel carrying capacity and shall be appropriately designed and or visually buffered according to the visibility of their location. That was included in PB 1926. It removes the potential conflict between wind energy facilities and the operation of a nearby naval annex that was included with PB 1714. Policy AG4, county growth management tools, including particularly zoning, should provide protection to agricultural and other resource-based activities from incompatible land uses, such as residential subdivisions, in the midst of generally uninterrupted farmland that was included with PB 1909. The reasonableness statement. This request is considered reasonable and in the public interest because this text amendment did in fact replace language previously adopted by the board and is an existing and necessary support service for agricultural that it was included in PB 1926. It helps preserve farm culture and promote farm and open space conservation through diversifying low impact uses of agricultural land that was included with PB 1909 and provides economic diversification and local economic development, PB 1909, and removes the potential conflict between the wind energy facility and the operation of the existing naval annex in PB 1714. Um, planning staff recommends approval of this request and the planning board did adopt this and found that it was consistent with the land use plan policies and was reasonable and in the public interest based on the items that we just identified. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this request. Any questions from the board? Okay, if not, then thank you, Ms. Vallow. I'm gonna open up public hearing on this. Is there anyone, no one signed up? Is there anyone wishes to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and I'll ask this board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, move for approval. I have a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Uh, any other further discussion? I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, next um, item is public hearing and consideration of resolution authorizing exchange of county property for property owned by Penelope L. Lockhart and conveyance of access easement across county property. And I believe uh, Mr. McCree has this tonight. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Thank members you. of the board, this matter comes before you tonight for consideration after public hearing of a resolution that will exchange approximately a half acre of property, uh, of county property for that equal amount, 
from Ms. Penelope Lockhart and also to delineate an easement to her property. The location of the property is about a three acre in holding piece within the county's Swan Beach tract, uh, just north of Swan Beach subdivision that we uh, were conveyed by United States Fish and Wildlife a couple of years ago. Uh, this came to the county's attention upon Ms. Lockhart's request and provi provision of information uh, that she had engaged or had entered into a contract for sale of this particular piece of property. And during the course of survey, it was determined uh, that the structure located on her property actually encroaches onto the county property. Uh, and secondly, uh, while there was a sand path about eight feet in width that has been traditionally utilized and the United States Fish and Wildlife recognized, it had never been officially documented through the conveyance of an easement. Um, in your agenda package, going in reverse order at page 60, is an aerial photograph of Ms. Lockhart's property with the structure. Uh, those lot lines are not accurate. It would, would appear that the structure is not in, actually encroaching on the county property, but at page 59 in your agenda package is an actual survey uh, that shows the encroachment and also shows the two triangular pieces on the north and south sides of the lot would be the parcels of, uh, that, that will, or pieces of property that will be exchanged as between the county uh, and Ms. Lockhart. And then further on that same survey at page 59, uh, you'll see a line uh, that is drawn on the property with, with numbers and letters L1 through L23. That delineates the easement area that would be conveyed uh, upon the board's approval. Uh, the county staff recommends uh, that the board, after public hearing, approve uh, this particular request and exchange of property in as much as it will remedy uh, and remove an encumbrance from the county property and also definitively uh, set out access to this particular parcel as has been traditionally utilized over the years. Uh, another important aspect of this is that we've been in communication with the United States Fish and Wildlife. You may recall the United States Fish and Wildlife Service imposed certain restrictions and covenants uh, on the property that the county received. Fish and Wildlife has agreed to release uh, from those covenants and restrictions the portion of property that the county will be conveying to Ms. Uh, Lockhart so there will not be an encumbrance or problem with her conveying her property pursuant to terms of her contract. Uh, likewise, though, the, uh, the Fish and Wildlife will require that the same restrictions that are on the county's property be imposed upon that portion that will be conveyed by Ms. Lockhart to the county. Be glad to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? If not, thank you, Ms. Pree. And I will open the floor for <clears throat> public comments. I have nobody listed. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the uh, resolution authorizing the exchange of county property. Okay, I have a motion for approval. I have a second. Okay, oh, Ms. Seth, okay, you have a second. Uh, any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay, next item is new business. Uh, consideration of approval of budget amendments to increase capital requests back to the initial recommended budget and I believe Mr. McCree is going to present that as well. I think this is delineated or set out in your agenda package as well. Uh, the purpose uh, but for the public's benefit uh, would provide to the board that uh, this budget amendment pr proposes to return into this year's budget uh, a number of capital projects that were omitted at the time the board adopted this year's budget uh, back at the end of June of last year. You'll recall these were uh, various capital projects and items that the board had vetted and had indicated its support through the through the manager's proposed budget. Um, because of COVID and, the, and, and not being sure that the county revenue stream would be such that we could fund these particular projects, the board removed these items from the, the budget. 
now revenue is, is actually meeting expectation uh, such that the manager is comfortable in recommending to the board that you return these items uh, into this year's budget uh, through this budget amendment. And I do believe um, that there's a portion, the, was it school capital, 400 is a portion of that's going to be for? My understanding from the manager is, and, and of course the school superintendent is here, uh, but that $200,000 of that $400,000 uh, uh, appropriation will be for the acquisition of mobile classrooms that the school system has determined it needs. Okay, thank you. Does the board have any other questions? If not, I'll ask for a motion for approval. Move for approval. Have a approval second. Second. I have a motion for approval second. Any other further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. The next item is under new business is consideration <clears throat> of approval of a budget amendment to use elections CARES funding to provide a bonus for full-time election staff, and I believe Ms. McCree is going to explain that for us as well. Yes, this, this particular matter uh, arises out of the Curita County Board of Elections uh, authorization to utilize Federal CARES uh, Act money uh, to provide a one-time bonus to its employees uh, due to their uh, roles during the course of the last election. Uh, these funds came from the Federal CARES Act uh, program that was adopted by Congress last year in response to the COVID issues. The particular amount of particular money that is, that is uh, being addressed tonight uh, is specifically uh, was specifically a portion of the CARES Act uh, that was grant funding for elections provided to the states, and then the state passed, at least in North Carolina's case, passed those funds on to the respective county boards of elections for their utilization. Uh, one of the purposes for which the money may be used is for uh, board of election uh, staff salaries. Uh, the state board of elections has issued an opinion uh, that the, the monies uh, having been authorized by the local board of elections to be expended for this purpose uh, should be done, should be approved by the board of commissioners as it is a ministerial act uh, for the board to uh, authorize this budgetary amendment to provide for use of these funds as determined by the, the local board of elections. Be glad to answer any questions. So to get this straight, then the, the, the county really has no control of saying yes or no, and other than it's just got to go through our accounting. That, that, that's correct. Um, it, it's an interesting relationship between boards of elections, as Commissioner Etheridge well knows, and, and, uh, and counties. Uh, while the county commissioners uh, have the power of the purse and control the uh, funding and appropriations for a local board of elections, uh, the employees for the board, local board of elections actually are employees of an answer to the county board of elections, not to the county commissioners or to the county manager. Um, and in that, that regards, uh, our courts have also determined that so long as there are monies available uh, within the uh, local boards, board of elections uh, budget, uh, they may be utilized essentially to any extent that the, the uh, local board of elections determines they may be utilized, including the setting uh, of salary or other bonuses that might be provided to its employees. And that's the basis for these monies now coming to you to approve the, the budgetary amendments uh, and ministerial process that, that's required as opposed to you really having any ability to say yay or nay. Thank you. Any further questions from the board on this? Hey, if not, I'll ask the board for a motion for approval or denial. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to approve. <clears throat> You have a motion for approval. I have a second. I'll second. A motion and a second. Any other questions? If not, I ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. And the next item on the agenda is board appointments. 
<clears throat> and we're going to start off with some commissioner reappointments, um, and then we'll move into the advisory boards. Um, first of all, I'd like to state that I'm going to be stepping down from the ABC board, and with that, I'd like to uh, nominate Commissioner uh, Mary Etheridge to uh, reside on the ABC board. I'll second that. Okay, first, a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Congratulations, Ms. Etheridge. <laughs> um, now, secondly, um, we're also going to have a reappointment. Um, Commissioner Jarvis is going to step down as the um, a RPO alternate, and there is a nomination of Commissioner Owen to, and I'll make that motion to nominate Commissioner Owen to step into that uh, the role. I'll second it. And I have a second for Ms. Jarvis. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Etheridge. <laughs> Next Bye. on the, uh, um, I'd like to go ahead and take care of, um, we have some um, advisory board, board appointees that are up for reappointments, and I'd like to just address those in one bulk, um, uh, if we could, and vote on that. And I'll let uh, Commissioner White uh, take care of that for us, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, we have several different advisory boards, and as always, we, uh, we very much appreciate uh, the time commitment from our citizens to serve on these boards, and we're always looking for people to serve on these boards. So um, if you're out there listening tonight and you're interested in a board, uh, it's just as simple as filling out a form. When we have openings, we shuffle through those and um, try and find good people to fit our boards. So. Uh, uh, the first uh, slate is for the uh, Board of Adjustment, uh, Kathy Bontemps, Carol Bell, and Troy Braithwaite. Uh, the next would be Mike uh, Faust on the Library Board. Uh, the Recreation Advisory Board would see uh, Ryan Hodges, Ted Jakuki, if I got that right, if I don't, I apologize, uh, Mike Faust, Peter Aitken, Charles Pickle, and Mike Lane. Uh, Sharon Price uh, will be reappointed to the Tourism Advisory Board. And our Veteran Advisory Board uh, would see three people reappointed, uh, John McCauley, Aaron Sterling, Michael Shea, and Steve Shago. Okay, thank you. Can I get a motion for approval for those reappointments? I have a motion. Oh, you got... Two of mine requested for not sending email. I didn't send it for the day. Okay. I think those have, to, those have to go on our next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. We just go ahead and send it, send it out, and then we'll get that on the next board then meeting. All right. I had a uh, I had a motion for approval. Do I have a, did I have a second? I'll second it. I'll second any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. The reappointments carry. Next, we have a new board appointment for the tourism advisory, uh, Miss Etheridge. Yes, for the Tourism Advisory Board, I'd like to nominate Daryl Harlow. He's the CEO of Built to Last up in Mayock. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Um, I have a motion for approval. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. And the next is for um, a new member for the Veterans Advisory Board, and I believe, Ms. Etheridge, you have that as well. Yes, I'd like to appoint Catherine Worthing. She's a Navy veteran, and she's also a retired registered nurse. I'll make the motion for approval. Have a second. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Thank you. That takes care of all of our board appointments. I do believe. Okay. And the next order of on the agenda is the consent agenda. <clears throat> do we have any discussions on that? Me. To approve. Yep. Okay. I'll make a. I need a motion for approval. Here we go. First, and then um, Commissioner White, second by Commissioner McCord. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Okay. That concludes our agenda items. I'd like to ask the board for a motion to adjourn from our regular meeting and move and convene into the special meeting of Tourism Development Authority. Motion. A second. Any other discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, and I believe um, we're going to move into the special tourism advisor, uh, the TDA request to revise the timeline criteria and allow a physical year carryover for event grants. And I believe Mr. McCree, you're going to address that for us. Many uh, well, as, rela as, rela as related to me by the manager earlier today, uh, this is a budget amendment that will basically uh, carry over into this fiscal year, if I recall him saying correctly, um, some of the, the event promotion monies that had previously been allocated for certain uh, events held in the county but had to be canceled. Uh, due to COVID, and this will allow them to be funded going forward. Mm -hmm. um, any questions from the board? Can get a motion for approval? Move to approve. No, yes. second. Most and second from Mr. McCord. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, and then I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn from the tourism. Um, special meeting with tourism move. development and and move into the special meeting of ocean sands water and sewage district board I have a motion for approval second yep. and a second from commissioner white any discussion all in favor aye, aye. Okay. thank you we are now um we have i believe a budget amendment that's going to be presented by mr mccree <laughs> again <laughs> don't have any particular detail with regard to these budget amendments other than what's set forth uh, on the budget amendment sheet, um, which, again, is just to amend the budget to carry on these uh, particular operations during the rest of the fiscal year. Does the board have any other questions or concerns on that? Okay, thank you, Mr. Cree. If not, we ask the board for a motion for approval. Moment to approve. And second from Ms. Etheridge. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn from the special meeting of Ocean Sands Water and Sewage District Board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that concludes our meeting for tonight. All right. Thank you, everyone.